Welcome back, everybody. Or welcome if you are new. Another NASCAR Thunder 2003 Career Mode episode. We are going on to New Hampshire for this episode, and also Pocono, which is good for us. I like Pocono a lot in this game, and New Hampshire has been decent for us in the past. Uh, we can get lucky with some cautions there and everything like that. Uh, we're not sitting terrible in points. We're like over 100 above Frank Kimmel and all of them behind us, which is awesome. We're like almost uh, we're like 150, 130 behind uh, Tabo dying here, so that's not great, but hopefully we're going to have a good race here. We have R&D going on for eight more races on the engine power, which is awesome. Hopefully we can finish that soon. We have the car set up and we have engines and chassis being built and repaired for a uh, future episode, which is good. So let's get on to New Hampshire and see how we can do here. All right, let's get in the qualifying here. I ran like a half a second, six tenths off of the uh, pole time in practice. It wasn't the fastest I've ever ran here, but at the same time, I think this is one of the tracks I've like nailed before on like a lap. So I'm not expecting to get a quicker lap here right now, but hopefully we can run like a 0.9 or 0 0.0. I think it's a 28 or a 29 zero, basically 28.9 or a 29 zero. Just have to uh, really hit it on the second lap good because the first lap we're not too fast coming to the line. Still 29.3, still 27th, but I know I can get three, four tenths quicker maybe. As long as we hit it really good here, both, both corners. Turn one was pretty solid. New Hampshire for some reason has been good to me in the past, so... It's a really weird track that I don't necessarily like racing and I racing and all that, but it, it usually works out pretty well for me in this game. I don't know why, but that's a 28.7. That is flying. That puts us all the way up to 12th. Wow, that's crazy. Joe Moore and Barney Hall welcoming you to Loudon, home of the New Hampshire International Speedway, for today's New England 300. Barney, the fans are packed in and ready for the action. What do you think about this track? This is a tough track for a lot of drivers. These long straights allow the cars to build up a lot of speed before some hard braking going into the flat corners. Michael Waltrip joined DEI at the start of the 2001 season and got a win in his very first race for his new team. He followed that up with some very impressive runs at the restrictor plate tracks. He's always had a knack for drafting and with top-notch equipment, you'll be sure to see him up near the front. The Sears Craftsman car is towards the bottom of the points list this season. And of course, nobody wants to be on the bottom of that points list. He'll have to work extra hard to pick up spots. Not an easy task to dig yourself out of a hole in this series. An unusual back-of-the-pack start for Terry Labonte. You know, I spoke with the guys from that team in the garage this morning, and they said they tried something a little different in qualifying this week. They learned their lesson, though. Stick with what works, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. get rolling here we're starting in 12th and we're pretty far up front i'm hoping i can get down immediately in front of nadu we are not gonna be able to do that i thought we had a little bit better of a jump on him but that's not the case try and roll this outside i went too high we're already in the third lane we're three wide try to not get too damage in this race we got frank kimmel all the way up here too that's kind of wild that's completely random we got Nadu and Kimmel all the way up here, but they may slow up the uh, the full pack like I'm going to probably. Oh, I was not expecting Tony Stewart to get there. Sorry. I'm pretty sure Dale Jarrett, or it's Dale Jarrett and or Gordon. I think Gordon is leading the points right now on the season. I forgot to look beforehand. We'll look after this race, though, see where they are stacked up at. Because I know it's between them two right now. They're, they're like too far away from everybody else. Jarrett had a good run in the last episode. Uh, I forgot what the track it was, but uh, he ended up winning at the second race, I believe it was, that we ran. We ran Daytona last episode, and I forgot the other one. But Daytona was great for us. We finished top five for the first time in our career. We are getting about turned by Jeff Green here on entry. We got Steve Park right behind him. Yeah, we're just slowly falling back, but that usually happens to us in these races. Back ends a little bit uh, bent in and stuff, I guess. A little damage. Trying to hold the bottom the best we can. These guys are so much faster on the middle of the corner than me. 
I try to maximize my speed for the uh, straightaways and the exit as much as we can, but they just roll the center of the corner so much, and that stability help that hits me in the middle of the corner is what kills me sometimes. Oh, jeez, almost three wide. I had to, like, stay low because Bill Elliott had a huge run there. Cut off Jeff Purvis there in the 16. Cannot get the thing turned into the uh, corner. Bill Elliott right there on our left rear. As I'm trying to turn back down, our entire like left side is destroyed right now. Because I keep getting clipped in the left rear. I come down on somebody. This is a mess of a race. I see uh, Dale Jarrett all the way back here behind us still. He's getting by us right there. We're getting really loose in the exit of the corner. 22 car, Scott Wimmer, that's an interesting... Oh, that's not... I'm stupid. 23 is Scott Wimmer. 22 is Ward Burton. That's an interesting uh, Caterpillar scheme. I really like that. It's, like, very different. Not the normal yellow and black. It's got, like, a whole bunch of pictures and stuff on it, which is quite interesting. Steve Park's getting to our inside here. Could have maybe been a little bit more aggressive on the gearing, but at the same time, I didn't want my engine to blow in the, in the race. Because you can't really pay attention to oil temp or anything in practice in the race and all that. So I kind of just have to go off of how I blew my motor at Daytona before. It was just like maxed out a ton. But we are slowly falling all the way to the back here. This is so sad. Like we, we qualified 12th and I just cannot get this thing to rotate mid-corner. It felt so good there for like the qualifying lap and stuff. And we're still running decent times, I'd say. Well, our fast slaps are 29 too. It's not great. But being stuck on the outside and everything, every single corner doesn't help at all. Like, I've barely been down on the bottom. But we basically fall all the way back to last. We're going to be pitting here in a few laps. I cannot wait for that new chassis to be done. That's going to have the new tire grip and stuff. Because I think that's going to be huge for us, honestly, whenever uh, that is done. I think it's in, like, three, four more races that uh, chassis will be done, which I'm super excited for. And that'll be the first one with the new tire grip R&D that we finished in the season. Then I can't wait for that uh, engine power to be done because I feel like that's where we're lacking a ton is just getting off these corners and the uh, power on the engine and all that. But I do think tire grip will be huge for us also. So I do want to look into like, oh God, I do want to look into like a new chassis guy and all that. But at the same time, I keep having them do more and more things that it's not really worth stopping them for like a week so I can go and change them out and all that just to see. I'd rather do it at the end of the season where you can see your guys' progression on the on the end of the season because they'll get a little bit better usually compared to like what you can sign at the time. So we'll have to check all that out at the end of the season. But we're going to pit here in like five. So actually, no, we can still go pretty far on fuel, but we've, fell, we've fallen really far off. Case Kane's the only one behind us right now. So I'm going to continue running laps and hopefully I can uh, figure this out a little bit more. Oh, we got a caution. I feel like that happens a lot of this track when it comes around the pit stop times. Oh, and there's a massive checkup off turn four. Not sure who all was in it or anything, but a lot of times when they come to pit, they'll hit the pit lane uh, road, like where the barrels are and everything. So let's check out and see what this caution is because we have the leaders right behind us. They were not that far back. So we're still on the lead lap. Ricky Rudd, he has done that multiple times here before. So it's Ricky Rudd every single time. Then he pulls back out and there's a huge checkup behind him, I think. But Ricky Rudd really messed that up and it looked like Scott Wimmer barely missed him and went and slammed somebody as well. So we're gonna come down and pit and then uh, hopefully we have a decent stop. Maybe we'll come out a few spots ahead. I don't know, but I imagine everybody's gonna pit here because nobody has started pit stops. That was the first person to try to come down. Todd Bodine was backwards in pit lane there. Don't know what just happened, but uh, yeah, he is still backwards on pit lane. So Casey Kane got completely checked up. I'm gonna try to get in the pit stall. Hopefully nobody else pulls out because I'm gonna get all my damage fixed as well here in this pit stop. Damn, they actually had a really fast stop. 17-8 with like a second and a half, two seconds of damage. We're all the way up to 24th. How did that happen? Like, did a lot of people have damage that they were getting fixed or something from that wreck? I have no clue. That is absolutely crazy. But back in the day, they had single file restarts here. 
trying to uh, make the car not be as loose for the stability help may have actually hurt myself more who knows I don't know what's good and what's bad there but we'll try it out here for the last half of the race I know I was getting by Andretti here in the exit of pit road we used him to turn a little bit there that actually worked out beautifully our car is still very damaged. I wish it would say what they actually fixed because, like, I do a second and a half of damage fix or two seconds, but everything's still yellow that was already yellow and stuff, so I don't know if it's even worth it, honestly, the extra time and stuff on pit road because I don't know if it does anything. But I imagine by the end of this run, by the end of the race, we're going to be right back to the back just like we were beforehand. It only took us, like, eight, nine laps to fall all the way to the back from 12, and I'm cutting off... Kyle Petty there a little bit, slowed him up a ton. They're, they're not that far back though, he didn't get too, too bad off. But we'll try to run the bottom here, see what we have. Might have a clean lap on the bottom for once this race. No, nope, Jerry Mayfield's gonna get under us. I clipped the wall as well, so we're actually gonna get back to the bottom for three and four anyways. So I'll actually be able to get a clean lap in here. They're three wide behind me still think the car might be a little loose to where that stability hurts us a lot but that lap no not our fastest yeah i thought it was gonna be our fastest of the race because we ran a 29.2 early on which is not great i am overdriving turn one a ton there i was trying to get the turn at any point and just never wanted to there goes jeremy jamie mcmurray going on by us but we're just slowly bleeding off spots like we were in the first run because they actually make their cars better too. I don't know what to do to make my car better, honestly. I'm just out here trying our best and with what we come in. I try to get in practice, get our car the best it can be off the rip, and then sometimes I'll try to adjust it mid-race a little because it gets either super tight or super loose. I need to stop overdriving turn one. Turn one is terrible for me right now. I know that for a fact. Got Kyle Petty. I don't think anybody's blown their engine as far as I know yet. Oh, I got the fantasy driver there. Whoops. Sorry about that. Unless Ricky Rudd did or somebody else did in that wreck, I'm not sure. Because uh, there's not actually, actually there's not that many cars behind me, so I don't know if Ricky Rudd did blow his motor or not. And he kept driving, so maybe not, I would imagine. I'm getting the fantasy driver again because I'm just trying to get through the corner and my car is so tight on the exit with the stability help does not want to rotate at all for me. I'm slowing down Robbie Gordon so much just because I'm trying to get slowed up to actually make the corner. So I don't blow it like I do turn one. Turn one's been lucky this race. But we are slowly falling back. I think, I actually don't think anybody's blown their motor because we're 38th. Behind me 39, 40, 41, 42, 43. Yeah, I don't think anybody's blown their motor in this race to this point, so. I'm going to try and hold off these guys the best we can for the rest of this race. We seem like somewhat similar speed to them, but they could have a lot of damage too if they were part of the wrecks. But uh, I'm trying to hold these guys off. I'm just going to try to focus on it, and you guys will see if anything crazy happens as the 111 is getting back under us here, and we're getting pushed back up. So that's going to lose a lot of time. So we're falling all the way back to 40th. Todd Bodine got by us as well. Yeah, we're all the way back here in the 40s once again. I'm hoping we can try to finish top 40. That's my goal here. There's a blow motor finally. Who was it? It was Jerry Nadu. Someone that we were actually trying to catch in points, so that's actually pretty big. We have a chance to finish 39th now because we're fighting here with Shane Hall super hard for that spot, that top 40 spot originally. But Jerry Nadu blowing his motor, that is awesome for us. We do have the leaders just behind us too. They're very, very close. Trying to hold off Shane Hall though. We've gone back and forth for a few laps and we've got two laps to go here at the line. I don't think the light, the leaders are going to catch us. It's getting close but I don't think they'll end up getting us because they're on the white flag. They would have to pass us on this lap. Trying to run like the super bottom here. We actually got it to turn really well so it seemed like my wedge adjustment to make it a little tighter might have made it better on the long run because the the short run it still wasn't very good but the long run it feels like it handles a lot better so that's actually really nice we're actually catching top of dine a little bit and now we're on the white flag is that the same jerry nadu it sure is i didn't know if uh that was somebody else because he missed pit road so kind of shocked by that i might have a shot at 38th here i'm gonna send it on top of dine if you guys remember the last time we were at pocono 
he completely like sent me into turn one so I have no mercy for this guy so I'm sending it in parking it on his nose using him to turn gonna try and get by him for 38th and we will so yeah I'm gonna take advantage of him and Shane Hall as much as we can because they absolutely like destroyed me the last time we were at Pocono but next off is Pocono Gordon gets another win on the year we're gonna go look at the overall points get a decent bit of money there for that a little over two hundred thousand dollars but where did uh what's his name finish dale jarrett because he was with gordon and points pretty close he ended up finishing seventh so not too bad he doesn't lead any laps though gordon leads only three and gets the win so mark martin led the most junior led the second most but they finished second and third to gordon there so he ended up getting out front probably after that caution or something and uh winning there at the end he got he won by a second also so they must have made their car much better there at the end of the race so let's go look at the overall standings and get ready for pocono Looking at the overall standings, we're still like 120-ish ahead of Andretti, which I don't... Actually, we did not beat him in that race, but Bodine we ended up beating, catching him a little bit in points. Actually, no, it was Nadu. We beat we beat Bodine and Nadu, but Nadu dropped more in points because he blew his engine. But yeah, we're probably not going to catch them in points anyways, but it would be nice to try to fight for the top 35. That would be nice, but up front, I believe Gordon was already leading. I could have been wrong. Yeah, he was already leading. He has a 75-point lead over Dale Jarrett right now. Now, but uh, they were they were by far the front two. But Junior catches a little bit because uh, he led some laps. I think he almost had the same amount of points as Gordon there in that race. But uh, Mark Martin led the most in that race, and then Ricky Rudd, who destroyed the pit wall. I don't even know where he finished in that race, but he is still rounds out the top five. Tony Stewart, a hundred back from him. So. Uh, first two winners of the two seasons uh the champions jeff gordon won the first season dale jarrett won the second season they're up front trying to fight for the championships and mark martin and jr have fought for the championships in both years so makes sense they're the top four but let's get ready to go on to pocono i want to try and change this car up a little bit get the best engine we can in there at 63 and then we'll get the best chassis we have currently seeing what we could do there because we have a little bit of tire grip good tire wear and see what we can do with this car hopefully we can do all right usually I, I we did good one time here and then got in a wreck with people exiting pit road i think it was michael watcher exiting pit road and we were fighting for like a top 30 spot every time i go back here i'm hoping to try to do that again but then we just keep falling back and finishing towards the back anyways so i don't have a whole lot of hopes going this one we're just gonna do the best we can and see how we can do so uh let's get in the pocono and hopefully we could run all right all right let's get in the qualifying here i ran like a second uh like a second and a half ish maybe off of the pole time i forgot exactly what the pole time was i think it was like a low 52 i kind of ran a, a high 53 so really it's not as close as i'm thinking in my head but Hopefully we can have a pretty good qualifying lap. Sometimes we just hit qualifying a little bit better than we do in practice, weirdly enough. But we, we're, we're very good at qualifying, I'll tell you that. We, we qualify well, we fall back in the race. I don't know why everybody's slower in qualifying than they are in the race. It makes zero sense at all. Got sideways in the entry of that. Not a very good entry to the tunnel turn, but hopefully the second lap will be faster anyways because we'll have more speed at the line. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we could run like a low 53, high 52, something like that. We'll see what happens. This first lap really depends. Were we running 54s? No, I think it was 53, 52. So yeah, we, we had a lot more speed in the line this time by. That's already 32nd. And I know I can get like eight tenths quicker at least. As long as we hit everything nice and neat, it won't be that bad. I'm just hoping like the long run will be good in the in this thing because that will mean a lot because usually we struggle at the beginning with the stability help and stuff but I feel like this track we usually get better as the race goes on and stuff not the best entry but not the worst I feel like it's a little bit better than the last one try to carry more speed through it this lap will definitely be quicker overall, overall as long as I don't hit the wall off turn three here basically that's the whole deciding factor on like how close I want to cut it out here, but I'm not going to cut it very close at all. Just try to get a decent time down, not push it too much. And we are going to get a 53-1. Where is that going to put us? Like 25th, 24th. I'll take that. It's not too bad. 
Welcome to Pocono Raceway, located in the heart of the beautiful Pocono Mountains for today's Pennsylvania 500 on MRN. This track produces some of the fastest racing of the year, but it also presents some special challenges to the drivers. Unique is definitely the word for this racetrack. First of all, there are only three corners, each of which has completely different banking, which also means there are three straightaways. And guess what? They're all different lengths. This is one tough racetrack to prepare a race car for. The Sears Craftsman car has not had the finishes he's hoped for in the past couple races. Oh, he definitely wants to turn things around starting now. His whole crew seems determined to pull out of this slump. I wouldn't be surprised if they pull off at least a top 15. Something a little out of the ordinary in this one for Ricky Rudd. Yeah, he was due for one of these bad starts, though. Nobody can start up front all year. You're going to have a bad qualifying run now and then the 18 car must have had problems in qualifying this week you're right it's going to be tough for him you get so used to starting up front and then you have an off week and you have to start towards the back then when race day comes you feel like you passed a thousand cars at the end and worse yet sometimes you never make it to the front get rolling here we're mid 20s probably gonna fall back to last pretty quick but we will do the best we can here i feel like we usually have decent starts but that's not the case here i was not able to get in front of jeff purvis there i can't remember what tracks we usually have good starts and which ones we don't i thought i thought this was one that we usually had good starts at but that is not the case clearly trying to get through turn one as clean as we can even though we hit tabo dine but tabo dine Hitting top of nine here is not a bad thing because uh, it's payback for our last time we were here trying to block off Jeff Green. So he could slow up here before we go three wide here through the tunnel turn because that would not be ideal. Because they are absolutely flying off to start this race. Like, I do not understand where all this speed for them comes from when I beat half of them in qualifying. It never makes any sense to me. They were all just running. Oh my goodness, Jerry Nadu. <laughs> they were just running the line like nobody was there. I hit the dude in front of me, and Jerry Nadu came up to my left rear, and it about lost it into everybody else behind us. So that gives us a little bit of room, which is nice. We're not dead last yet. They'll catch back up pretty quick, though, I imagine. Hopefully, somebody like Nadu or Bodine can blow their motor again. This race, we could try to catch them a little bit in points once again because uh, Nadu blowing his motor helps us out some because we actually finished 38th also. It wasn't, wasn't like we finished 42nd like every other week. We actually got up into the top 40s, which was really nice for us. I was really happy with that at New Hampshire. At least it shows that we have some speed and stuff at some tracks, and it, it's very encouraging, I'll, I'll say that. It's very, very encouraging when we can actually go up and battle some guys later on in a run. That's what I'm hoping we'll be able to do here as long as we don't really damage our car. Because you can see how much faster they are than us right now. Ricky Red's going to be flying to our inside. I'm not going to really block him off. But Frank Kimmel is not nearly as fast as Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd is fifth in points. Frank Kimmel is behind me in points. So didn't really want to try to block off uh, Ricky Rudd there. Frank Kimmel, I don't mind blocking off. Nadu is going to put us three wide here on the, not back stretch, I guess, but first stretch. Second stretch, maybe? I don't know. Front stretch might be considered uh, first stretch. I have no clue. Try and check up for the tunnel turn. Ricky Craven does not want to. Good luck, Ricky Craven, in your future endeavors. <laughs> we got damage on the left rear now. That's unfortunate. Might be some aero damage on the car there. But the more I can keep the car just green, the faster we'll be overall also. But we're in 40th, 41st, 42nd, 43rd behind us. It looks like it is Ken Schrader, Ricky Craven, and I can't quite see who is in last. It might be John Andretti. Could be wrong, though, but I don't 100% know. But we're going to have to pit about halfway here. Probably going to get passed by Ken Schrader here very quickly, and then also uh, Ricky Craven. I think that might be... John Andretti in last. We might be able to hold him off some, but I'm going to try and hold these guys off until the pits. We'll see if we can. I highly doubt it because you can see how much quicker they are than me on the straights. And this is why Tybo Dine ended up 
dumping me is because like I'll block them on the straightaway, but they'll go straight through the grass going into the next corner to try to get by me and just absolutely hit me. Like there's nothing I can do about that when they go below the, the grass, which is ridiculous. Leaving a room though, side by side. He got by us. It is John Andretti behind us. So we have fallen the second blast now. I'm gonna try and draft off these guys and stay with them as much as we can, but we're just slower in the corners right now. And not a lot of guys that we run around are really back here at the moment because Ricky Craven and Ken Schrader are not people we run around every week. So definitely think they're gonna be faster than us. Kimmel's not that far in front of us, but I'm hoping we can hold off uh, Andretti for the time being. The pit stops look like they're beginning. John Andretti took a real low line off the tunnel turn, so I imagine he's pitting here. It looks like Ricky Craven up there is pitting. Handful of people already on pit road. We probably could pit right now and make it to the end on fuel, but that's a little risky, I feel like, for me. I'm just going to come in about halfway or just after halfway, something like that. Hopefully. It will be okay for us, but uh, we did fall back to last behind Andretti. No shocker there, but hopefully we can try and make up some time just running some clean laps and just see what we can do. Hopefully I can try to catch up the Frank Kimmel up there. He is quite far ahead now, but hopefully we can try to catch him a little bit. All right, well, I think I want to pit this time by. It's a couple laps later. We're going on to almost halfway. It's going to be 10 of 20. The following lap would be halfway. There might be a lot of cars pitting on this lap, but who knows? Hopefully, with us being as far back as we are, it's not going to be a problem. Might get slowed down some, but I really want to try and make this car better because I feel like we're struggling too much and we're just losing more and more time. Somebody that already pitted is straight behind us. It looks like that might be Jeff Burton. It looks like it is Sitco. So it's probably Jeff Burton's, but it actually looks like we're going to be the only ones on pit road as well. Try and get down to 70 miles an hour, and we're fine. So get this wedge turned back up, I guess. I don't know if uh, I'll turn it back up barely, because that should put it at negative 5, I would, 0.5 and everything else should be fine. Not gonna get the damage fixed and hopefully they have a good stop here. Pretty solid stop, 16-3, I will take that. Got some cars on pit road now. We're gonna be coming out in the middle of traffic, so this is gonna be quite interesting. Hopefully I don't uh, get ran into the back of, so I'm gonna try and hold this low line as best as possible. Kinda slowed up both of them behind me. I, well, actually, we got right up to speed in the middle of the corner, so that worked out perfectly. Didn't really get in the way or anything, but I'm hoping Frank Kimmel stays out a while and maybe we could uh, make up some time on him, potentially. That would be ideal as long as we can put down some good laps and not really mess up. It looks like uh, Jeff Purvis there is gonna be pitting this time by, because you can see them take that super low line on the exit of the tunnel turn. But I tried to tighten up the car there a little bit, so hopefully the stability will be better later in the run. Anybody on pit road, we're getting by for a position. We are 42nd, so maybe somebody blew their motor and I don't know about it, because I this track's so big, it could be a place where they blow the motor and I don't even see them blow the motor, because we were so far back and all that. That's a possibility. But we are in 42nd. We're not dead last, which is nice. Maybe we'll get back to uh, John Andretti. I don't know where he's at exactly, but we already did our pit. He did their, they did their pit like two laps earlier but hopefully we'll have some better tires than them like later in the race or something. That was a good tunnel turn, probably the best I've had so far. But more people are pitting this time. I'm just interested to see where Frank Kimmel is. I don't know if he's already done his pit stop. He might have, and if he has, well, I'm super, super sad because I don't see him anywhere. But uh, definitely some leaders coming down pit road, they said. We're already a lap down from pitting, and a lot of these guys have not pitted yet because you can go pretty far on fuel. But it looks like Frank Kimmel may have already pitted because it says the 46 is in 41st. And I don't see them nowhere and not sure where they're at exactly. So I'm a little sad. Not, I think he might be way up there on this straightaway potentially. And I was hoping to undercut them and get some time back on them. We actually ran our fastest lap there of the race. So definitely a good choice of when we pitted instead of staying out long and going slow. Because uh, making the car a little bit better was uh, definitely worth it. 
Well, we have three laps left, but we're about to have two laps left because Dale Jr. is right behind us leading this race. I'm pretty sure he's already pitted. I was about to go a lap down to Jeff Burton, who was leading, and he was somebody that pitted super early, but he pitted once again. I guess, like, he pitted too early or something. We're already in 42nd, and there's a blown engine here. Uh, who could that be? It looks like it is Scott Riggs. No, J uh, Johnny Benson. That's who it is. I always get Scott Riggs and Johnny Benson messed up in that 10 car. In my head, it's always Scott Riggs because I'm used to that scheme in the 10 for him. But Johnny Benson blows his engine. That gets us up to 41st. So two blown engines in this race. Oh, and we get a caution. Oh, that sucks because we're freaking a lap down. If, we could, if that could have came a lap earlier, that would have been awesome. But now we're a lap down and it ends the race anyways. We don't have a shot at finishing it regardless. So that's going to end the race. I guess somebody ran to the back of Johnny Benson in the middle of that that uh, blown engine and the tunnel turn. Oh, yeah. Oh, really hard. Oh, and he's almost flipping. Who was that? Jimmy Johnson. Oh, he blew his engine too. We might get it to 40th. We might get up to 40th. He was battling with Rusty Wallace there and he just got used as a pick. That is rough. So we actually might get up to 40th there with uh, Johnson blowing his engine. That would be pretty lucky for us. But we are a lap down. Don't know how exactly we're going to get uh, scored out here. But I do think we might get 40th. It looks like we will. Shane Hall got fifth. What? Shane Hall definitely was like 40-something. I'm super confused. Where did we end up getting finished? Like, this, say we finished 40th? Yeah, okay, we finished 40th. But I'm so confused because Shane Hall finishes fifth? He was not that far in front of me with Frank Kimmel and Ty Bodine. Like, they were literally right there in front of me. Now Frank Kimmel gains a ton of points as well on us. That really sucks. I feel like we got screwed out of the points there. I don't know what happened. I think something went weird with the... Uh, caution and then them going and crossing the finish line but i'll take a top 40 it looked like bobby labonte blew his engine early but man that sucks that those three guys that i'm like battling in the points ended up shooting straight up to the top five six fifth six and seventh because that made no sense but gordon gets second junior gets the win don't know where Jarrett was i didn't quite see going through that but uh, we'll check out the full series points uh going into next episode Next episode, we have Indianapolis and we have Watkins Glen. So, road course and Indianapolis. So, interesting. So, we're still 36th in points, but uh, Tabo Dine so much further. Frank Kimmel caught us a ton there, which really sucks. We usually get that at the super speedways on them. Shane Hall jumps from 40th up to 38th. He was way far behind. So, that's super unfortunate and frustrating because we were doing pretty good in the points there. We'll look at the top standings because uh, Dale Jr. might have taken over Dale Jr. Jarrett's spot and he did he's only 87 points back now from Jeff Gordon Jarrett fell down to 121 Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd still rounds out the top five with Stewart catching Ricky Rudd Ricky Rudd uh, had a bad race so we'll probably at New Hampshire I would imagine but that is quite interesting so hopefully you guys enjoyed appreciate you guys for watching as always we have some R&D that's finishing pretty soon in like three more race and three more episodes I should say uh the garage we have engine being built and repaired next episode that's awesome and then chassis we still have a repair for next episode to finish and then the built the new built one that will be awesome with the new tire grip that we up to 74 that will be awesome that'll be the first time anything in our chassis I think besides durability has been in the 70s so that's gonna be awesome cannot wait for that hopefully you guys are excited too because i think we can start running a little bit better at that point that would be really nice so hopefully you guys enjoyed appreciate you guys for watching i'll catch you guys in the next one